Hello there, today we're going to be looking at all the rares, their locations and drops inside of Stone Talon Mountains. Just a quick note, I believe three of these rares are actually friendly to Alliance and they're the ones at Stone Talon Peak, so I would probably recommend not doing this on Alliance, this is kind of a horde only zone, but really it's kind of over near the Barrens anyway, so you're probably not going to be here on Alliance. So anyway, without further ado, let's get on with it. Taskmaster Whipfang Our first rare is Taskmaster Whipfang, a level 22 elite knoll that hangs around inside of Windshear Crag. Being a 22 elite, obviously you do have to watch out, he does hit reasonably hard, but nowhere near as hard as some of the other rares in this zone. And yeah, he's normally by himself, he doesn't really move about much either, so that's all good. And yeah, it's pretty much just to kill him when you can. As for drops, he will guarantee you a green, but the green is completely random, no unique loot here. Foreman Rigger So after killing Taskmaster Whipfang, if you head just a stone's throw away to the nearby building, you will find Foreman Rigger, or hopefully should find him, a 24 Elite. Again, he doesn't really hit that hard, um, but obviously he's right next to Taskmaster Whipfang, so if you're in the area, definitely try and kill both. Nothing too difficult about this fight either. And much like Taskmaster Whipfang, he will also drop a random green view, so no unique loot here either. Pridewing Patriarch Up next we have the Pridewing Patriarch, a level 25 normal rare that hangs around in the northeast corner of Merc Fallon Lake. I just thought I would quickly show you here on the video just before I go and kill him how you actually get up to this place where he is because a lot of people obviously don't realise that there's tons of places in these zones that are really well hidden and things like that and I think a lot of people are probably not aware that this guy is even around. I remember stumbling upon this accidentally and not even in Vanilla or Burning Crusade, I think it was Wrath when I actually found this place out. So I wouldn't be surprised if this guy's here a lot of the time just because players aren't aware. So as far as the fight goes with this guy, he's obviously a 25 normal so it means that he's not going to give you an absolute bashing in like an elite would. That being said, he's probably a normal because he has like 3 or 4 ads around him and the fight can get a little, I mean if you don't have AoE you're going to struggle a little bit. So if you are an AoE class you could probably solo it, if not I would probably take a friend with you. The reason you want to kill this guy actually is because he does drop unique loot. He has an 80% chance to drop the web wound cloak which is a pretty good 5 agility cloak but the thing that people really would like to come for is the 20% chance to drop the wyvern tail spike, a really cool one handed dagger that again has that poison attribute and I've said before in previous videos I really like that so yeah definitely worth checking out and seeing if this guy's here. Sorrowing. Up next we have Sorrowing, the level 27 elite wyvern that roams around the outer edge of Merc Fanon Lake. Sorrowing is easily denotable by his blue colour, he doesn't look like any of the other wyverns in uh, Stone Talon Peak or the kind of surrounding area so that's good and you can use his slow movement to your advantage as well if you can slow or anything like that or you can move fairly fast def it's definitely worth running away from. I'm just showing here he actually has a poison that can uh, sticks on you for quite a while and can end up doing a fair bit of damage to you. Luckily I'm a shaman and this is vanilla so we actually have poison cleansing totem which is uh, absolutely fantastic, that was a blast from the past. Uh, as for killing this guy, he's not really actually going to give you anything unique, so if you're in the area it's worth killing him, but other than that, yeah, I, I wouldn't really wait around for him. He only gives you a guaranteed random green, so yeah, overall pretty disappointing. Sister Riven and Vengeful Ancient Up next we have a 2 for 1 with Sister Riven, a level 27 elite harpy. 
and Vengeful Ancient, a level 30 treant that hangs around in the southwestern portion of the Charred Vale. I put them both together because they are literally, like, they're even closer together than Taskmaster, Whipfang, and Foreman Rigger. Um, so yeah, I thought I'd just bunch them together because there's no point in doing uh, a thing for both. So these guys both drop uh, greens, they don't have any unique items at all. You'll probably find that Sister Ribbon is obviously, while well, she's an elite, so she's more difficult in that sense, but she also normally has a couple of harpies around her. And as you'll see here, she also uses like a fire nova attack and things like that. So she's generally considered the more dangerous of the two. Vengeful Engine is obviously easier to kill. However, because this Charred Veil area is quite popular with players in vanilla, as it's kind of the three road, three road into Desolus, you'll often find that he is more likely to be dead as he is a normal. Yeah, like I said, they both drop normal greens, no unique loot. But if they're both here, it's definitely worth checking them out. Like, well, as you can see in the video, they are literally right next to each other. So you've really got nothing to lose by doing this. Okay, now that is the base area of Stone Talon Mountains dealt with. We're now going to look at the three elites that are alliance friendly and horde unfriendly in Stone Talon Peak at the very top of Stone Talon Mountains. Sentinel Amara San. So up first in Stone Talon Peak we have Sentinel Amara-san, a level 27 elite that looks a lot like the guards in Darnassus. One thing she will start doing when you fight her is she will start casting Wrath at you, which is obviously not too bad if you're higher level as you can pretty much resist most of it. I'm not sure what the damage is like at lower level to be honest, I haven't really had a look and I imagine it's quite punishing. When she gets to below half her health she will transform into a panther and that's where the real damage begins. As you can see here I am taking a feb of damage from a 27 elite so yeah as if you kill her she doesn't drop any unique loot unfortunately however she does have a guaranteed greens so if you are in the area definitely worth killing her but i wouldn't go out of your way for it as it is kind of a bit of a journey brother raven oak So now we have the unofficial hard mode of Stone Talon Mountains, the two rares inside of the Talon Den. The Talon Den is pretty much just entirely covered with elites and is very, very difficult. To get to Brother Raven Oak, you will need to head down, take the first left over the first bridge and then carry on straight and then go straight over the second bridge and he's in a little nook with several other elites. I took a crap ton of damage from these, it almost killed me, and I am a level 60 with raid gear, so just bear that in mind, you are always, you're gonna need at least two or three of you here to do this. The incentive for coming down here is that obviously someone at Blizzard realized it was a right pain in the arse, and they put a chest next to him, so you can pretty much double dip with these ones, you get a random green, and you also will have a tattered chest as well nearby, so definitely worth checking out, there are a couple of quests that send you down here on Horde with decent XP, so yeah, definitely do it if you're here. Now to Zar. So finally we have Now to Zar, the highest level and a level 30 elite fairy dragon inside of the Talon Den, right at the back as well. I'm just showing you here really sped up because it takes far too long to show, but right after you kill Brother Raven Oak, I'm just showing where you need to go in order to get to Naltazar. It's a little bit convoluted, I think there may be a quicker way, but these underground caves always confuse me, so yeah, apologies. As for the fight itself, it is pretty terrible. I mean, I fared better in this one than I did against Brother Raven Oak, but I think that's because I knew what I was getting myself into this time. And I came a little bit prepared with them, um, you know, various shaman-esque uh, abilities and things like that. Primarily, the it was the fine over totem that basically saved me. So yeah, yeah. But um, yeah, Naltazar will do a couple of spells on you, and it can be pretty bad. I think he does some sort of mana burn. If you're a magic user.
because you're basically going to take more damage um, when you're fighting this guy. Again, I mean, you're going to be down here with friends anyway. Like, if you made it down here solo, congratulations. You know, you, you must be absolutely insane to kind of want to put yourself through that much torment. Much like Brother Raven Oak, he just drops a random green. And again, like I said before, somebody obviously thought that it was a bad idea to have a single mob that drops greens down here. So they decided to add tattered chests next to them. Overall, okay. That is it from me, that is all 9 rares, the locations and drops inside of Stone Tunnel Mountains. Apologies if this video is a bit long, some of these mobs are particularly tricky in that they kind of have weird spawn locations or there's something particularly difficult about it that I kind of need to mention, so I know this video did go on a bit longer than you probably would need to. Overall, Stone Tunnel, pretty disappointing for a zone because, you know, just lack of unique loot really. As always, if you enjoyed the video, please do leave a comment and let me know, and if you'd like to see more of these, subscribe to the channel.